Tova, how have you been? The fire made me think of the myths and legends Sven loved. Would you indulge me with a tale? I would be glad to hear of Svartalfheim. I would not tell it half as well, but his favorite was a fable to remind us to find meaning in our deeds and not in how others think of us. Svartalfheim was not short of legendary dwarven blacksmiths. Everyone has heard of Ivaldil, Brokkr, and Sindri. But this tale is of a stonemason. He lived as far south as he could, where Gulnamar meets Vangrim. His workshop sat upon the shoreline. Obsessed with glory, his love of masonry had all but died. He scoured the shore seeking precious stones washed up from other realms. Then he saw it. Something beautiful, glittering, shimmering across the water, upon an island he had never dared travel to. He hastily built a boat, working long into the night. He set sail and found many rocks that sparkled and dazzled upon the island. He cried out in joy. To craft anything from such stones, he would be remembered for all time. Then he felt a sudden sting on his foot. Then another, and another. His eyes adjusted to the dark. So consumed was he by his desire for renown, he failed to realize he had walked into a nest of snakes. Until it was already too late. And so, clutching the stone that sealed his fate, there he died. Remembered, yes, but only for his folly. A fine tale, Toby, and well told. Sven would be proud. Richard well. Of course. I just... The flames soothe my mind, as do the tales told here. You have one to share, Gunnar. A legend of Svartalfheim. Aye. A story of a king who could not see the wood for the trees. Ravenwa. Greatest of dwarven kings. Within his palace in Gulnamar, he wanted for nothing except an heir. Raidmar and his wife had grown old, perhaps too old. Late one night, consumed with worry, Raidmar walked in the shadow of his vast mountain top palace, tears in his eyes. The great king, what ails you? A voice said. Afraid, Raidmar saw no one. Who goes there? He replied. Then he saw who addressed him, a vast and ancient tree, perhaps Almost as old as Emir himself, Raidmar sat upon its roots and told the tree he feared he was too old to give his subjects the legacy they deserved. The tree was so moved, it wept and offered its tears to Raidmar. Drink, great king, it said and your woes shall be washed away. 
Ridmar observed the grass, the meadows, the leaves of the tree. His subjects' happiness could be seen in how they cared for the land. His legacy was all around him. Raidmar felt at ease, realizing he had everything he needed, and asked that the land receive the tree's gift instead. The tree's happy tears flowed evermore, enriching the land. Nine moons passed, and a baby's cry rang through Raidmar's palace. Long would dwarves place gifts in the weeping tree's roots, in memory of Raidmar and his kindness that shaped all he touched. All things happen when they should, old friend. Mm. I hope so. Whatever is the matter? Have you been spending too much time drinking Vulgar's special sauces again? I am troubled by visions of Odin and of Svartalfheim. They clot my mind without warning, without invitation. Aha! Which is how Thor flooded Svartalfheim. Thor, fast to act, but not so fast to think would stomp and thump and fight and bump everywhere he and Mjolnir should go. One day, he fought a giant in Jotunheim with such ferocity that Thor's killing blow was felt through all nine realms. The ground shook, mountains rose up, hills tore apart, creating canyons, and north of Svaladal, the massive lake that housed the springs of Yggdrasil split open, flooding all of Svartalfheim. The dwarf king, Kraithmar, acted swiftly. He built three mighty dams, preventing further damage to his realm, working alongside his beloved subjects. So surprised was one builder to see the great king working as an equal that he slept tumbling into the raging waters below. Without hesitation, Raidmar leapt, once from his horse, and again from the center of the dam's lip, diving into the frightful torrent. Before the builder could even cry for help, Raidmar was pulling him onto dry land. And so two giant statues were built to honor the king, one for each leap of unthinking bravery and stood until the end of days. Until Ragnarok. Aye! So you see, actions ripple outward, like a stone falling into a lake. Or like Thor crushing a Jotun skull with Mjolnir. Affecting everything, whether foretold or unknown. I fear my tale has only worsened your concerns. Hmm? No, a good story is uh, a lark that feeds a mind's flame. Thank you, friend. I hear you seek tales of Svartal pain. You are not alone in your glimpses of the Aesir. You have seen them too? No. Only the power the visions hold, and their effect on those once held dear. You? Speak of Sigurd. Do you want my tale or not? There was a dwarven miner who cared only for his work. Mining was all he knew. All he wanted to know, and all he would ever know. One day, he heard a strange noise. All his long life working in the northern mines of Vangrim, he had never known a boulder to squeak. He ignored it at first, but 
as the hours passed, the squeaking continued relentlessly. When the miner could take no more, he split the boulder apart with his pick, and then he saw a squirrel. Until now, pinned by the boulder, afraid and tired, the freed squirrel climbed into the miner's long beard and slept for three days. When the dwarf awoke the next day, he found fruit and nuts waiting for him. A gift from the squirrel, the first the miner had ever received. Finally, the miner had a friend. The squirrel led the dwarf to a stone hill within a lake. There, the dwarf would fish for supper while the squirrel played in the trees. One night, watching his fishing line, the dwarf drifted off to sleep, smiling enjoying the happy squeaks of his friend above. When the sun rose, its light did not find the dwarf, for he had turned to stone, his short-lived bliss captured evermore. The squirrel? It never left his side, hoping his friend would awaken, just as the miner had waited for the squirrel to do the same. Sigurd, he is not lost to us. Thank you.